Okay. Okay, now you don't want to, you want to click on that introduction disclaimer to start your slideshow. There you go. Okay. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Oh, and gosh. you can hit, and you can just hit slideshow if you want to on the up, upper right corner. Okay. Um, do you now, see it? Now, when you're doing this, uh, yeah, over here. Upper right hand corner. Upper right hand slideshow. Slideshow, yeah. There you okay, go. Sorry. And then you can just use your down arrow, down and up arrow to advance or, you know, revert to the previous slide. Oh, I yeah. like that. Ooh, can it go back? Yeah, there I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And usually for that second slide, I mean, you can just rapidly click on everything so it shows up at once. Do you, do you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And it should be just super short. You don't have to. When you say I mean, like say, people slide, see this every second? month. What's the second slide? It's about the, uh, like, hit your down arrow. Uh, down arrow. Down arrow. Okay. There you go. And this is just a, you know, about the club. So if you keep hitting enter, oh, okay. keep hitting, I have to keep hitting it for it to go on to the next subject. Yeah. So keep hitting enter, enter, enter. Yeah. Okay, got it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Glad you told okay. me that. Okay. Okay. There you got it. Okay. Up, 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 and here. All Very right. Good. Okay. And. And I, I was all ready to, I went over how I wanted to sound and everything. <laughs> You're still okay. be fine. You'll be fine. What happened to my screen? Here it is. No, that's not it. Start slideshow again. Let's go to this page and start slideshow. And okay. There we are. We have one minute and I'll let you start the recording. Sorry, one minute. Okay. Let's see if Mel's here. We have she Serena. She Penny. may not be able to be here this week, but I okay. uh, present this month, and she may not be able to do it to sell. I, I think it's a, I think it's a he. He. It's I'm a, sorry. Yeah. It's Mel. Yeah. Okay. Mel can like I guess I know many yeah. women. Okay, you can start, Anitra. You can start the recording and start. What am I clicking on to record? At the, uh, there's a little red dot right above the, uh, not on that screen, on your um, go to webinar control panel. Do you see that? Here? It is. Yeah, you're going to have to edit that. Okay. <laughs> welcome to, welcome all to the August 2024 International Model Investment Club meeting. Okay, let me get this out of your way. And here are links to find and follow us. The club's YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Better Investing website. Oops. Okay. The club was founded in May 2016 as a Better Investing Model Club. We are open to the public. Meetings are held on monthly meetings are held on the third Monday each month, except December, when it's the second Monday due to holidays. Because our members are very internationally, we use hypothetical money to avoid issues with currency exchanges and taxes. Our primary role is to be a learning lab of better investing principles and the fundamentals using the stock selection guide and to learn investment club operations management. All meetings are held online, serving visitors and guests from around the world. And our 12 current members are from the United States, Canada, and China. Oops, not that way. 
Oh, yes, I wait. Okay. There is a panel usually in the upper right hand corner of your screen. There you should be able to see handouts available. All visitors and guests will be muted during the meeting and you may post questions in the section in the questions section. At the end of the stock presentations, visitors and guests will be unmuted and will be able to ask their questions and make comments. Meeting segment segments are timed and alerts will signal when segment is when a segment is near the end and when finished. Our club disclaimer. The information presented is for educational purposes only and not intended as a recommendation to buy or sell the securities mentioned. The views expressed are those of better impressive of are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of better investing. Investors should conduct themselves, conduct their own, I'm sorry, research and analysis before making any investing decisions. Securities discussed may be held by presenters in their own portfolios. This presentation may, came, may contain images of websites, products, or services not endorsed by the Better Investing, by Better Investing or the presenters. This meeting is recorded and posted to our YouTube and our YouTube channel. Okay, so moving on to tonight's agenda. Here, I have the agenda. Tonight's agenda, um, we're going to, next we're gonna go over the treasury report, which is by Kent. Penny. Okay. And the education topic, which is my favorite part of our meetings, will be done by Ready. And Disney is going to be presented by Joel, Amazon by Piero, um, Schwab by Joanne and Qualys by Christopher and maybe LGIH by Mina. Uh, they're going to give us their findings and their recommendations for the club. Then we'll open mics for the guests for their comments and questions. And the part we'll be discussing club meeting. I mean club business, I'm sorry. Uh, so far, do you have any questions or did I cover it all? You, you covered it all. I think we can turn it over to Hanny now for his report. Okay, and Hanny, it's off to you. I, okay. I'll, I'll make you a presenter, Hanny. Thanks, Joanne. Uh, show my screen. Okay. Um, are you seeing the right screen? No, we see the split screen. Oh no. Okay, display settings, squab. How's there you that? Go. Beautiful. Okay. So uh, this is uh, my first treasurer's report of this era. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to thank Reddy for stepping in last month. I was away on vacation. So thanks, Reddy. And uh, with that, um, I'm just going to. Uh, go over the very quickly the transactions uh, from last month, uh, portfolio analysis and performance, some forecasting, and I'll make some recommendations. So um, we had a starting cash balance last month of about twenty thousand dollars, and then uh, uh, following the meeting last month, uh, we deposited twelve hundred. There were two motions to buy. Uh, 10 shares of CrowdStrike at, uh, was about $3,600. And then NICE, uh, which was presented by Jane and Christopher, uh, 30 shares. So uh, we, we purchased about $5,000 worth. Then I deposited uh, $1,100 this month uh, today. And that's because we now have 11 members currently. So we typically deposit $100 per member. So our ending cash balance is 13,539 
80. And uh, moving on to the next slide, I just wanted to show this. We typically don't show this screen, but we're getting about $700 in dividends. Um, our portfolio yield is about 0.9%, but that's it's a little higher than is because these are the only companies that pay dividends. The rest of the port companies do not, but they're taken uh, into account in the yield calculation. So, um, so the the yield is actually um, uh, less because of that, or higher if you exclude the other uh, the other companies. Uh, but the the bottom line here is that we're getting about seven hundred dollars a year in dividends. IIPR is the largest uh, dividend payer, uh, followed by PayX and uh, Schwab. And this is the portfolio. Um, we had uh, we added CrowdStrike at at uh, uh, what was it? It was about three hundred and sixty dollars a share, and then because they had that issue. Uh, with their um, software upgrade, there was a um, the the stock price went down to 262, so we're showing negative, but I think they'll recover. Uh, the two that we should pay attention to are Disney uh, and uh, LGI Homes, which are both uh, underperforming, and also they are they make up less than five percent of the portfolio, so. Uh, and also CrowdStrike makes up less than 5%. So I'll talk a little bit later. Uh, our can is about 13,500, as you can see, and uh, that's about 15%. So when we bought uh, CrowdStrike and, and um, uh, Nice, uh, that reduced our cash balance because we had quite a, a large uh, amount. Uh, this I just put this slide together to show lifetime performance against various benchmarks that are available on my iClub, and you can see that lifetime we are a little behind our objective, which is to beat the market by five percent. Uh, currently, if if we compare to the S&P, we're about five percent uh, behind. Well, actually ten because we're supposed to beat it by by five, so S&P, so we should be at 20%. So we're um, we're underperforming our goal. Uh, but uh, compared to some of the other benchmarks like emerging markets, bonds, and so on, the Russell 2000, uh, we're doing fairly well. And I was surprised that the Dow actually, uh, lifetime since 2026, uh, shows a negative uh, return. So that, that was a shock to me. Uh, one thing that I did read recently is that the um, the, the Russell 2000 is composed of about 40% of the Russell 2000 are not profitable. So uh, it's not hard to beat that benchmark, but still, I mean, it's uh, 8.9 versus our club, which is 10%. So we really need to be doing uh, much better. Um, you can see the NASDAQ is up 20% and that's primarily because of the uh, so-called Magnificent Seven stocks, which have been on fire recently. Um, I also wanted to highlight this. This is our watch list. And you can see that since we've added these, um, uh, these companies to the watch list, they've done quite well, some of them. So Joanne, uh, suggested we we uh, track Copart or put it on our watch list. It's it's up 90% since uh, 2022, and then uh, I'm not sure what FSLR is. Nvidia is up quite a bit. Palantir is up. Tesla is up. So if we're doing any stock studies going forward, we might want to take a look at this watch list. Some um, strong performers. Okay, some recommendations. So CrowdStrike, Disney, and LG uh, Homes, uh, each is five less than five percent of the portfolio, so they're they're um, uh, they're not going to contribute very much uh, going forward. So we need to consider adding or maybe removing some of these. Um, 
specifically LG and Disney are underperforming. So we might want to review that and, and challenge them if necessary. And as I said earlier, uh, we need to increase our, uh, improve our performance. And uh, so when we select new stocks, we have to keep that in mind. Are they going to help us to beat the met benchmark? And uh, that's it. Any questions, comments, anything? No? Okay. Uh, any? No, wait. <laughs> any? Oh, okay. Any? Yes. Sorry. Yes, ready. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead, ready. Our our watch list is never active. I think we should uh, be more active on that one and uh, update them, add them, subtract them. And also, I think FSLR is uh, first solar. The solar. Oh, first solar. Yeah, yeah. That's right. 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 And okay. I, I loved your presentation. I'm going to be looking forward to that. Um, my only question is, I think when we looked at, I agree with the uh, what you said about the, um, uh, and Joanne said about the, the watch list and, and using some of those uh, as a pre for presentation. I like that. But when you talked about some of the stocks that were down, and is, does that include the week that everything went down have they come back because some some things that were down before two mondays ago are are actually doing better like nvidia is one of them and tesla is not one tesla last i look it's not one of our stocks but it's just an example of something that fell before that monday and that hasn't come back and maybe these are like that Yes, yeah, so I think uh, like these, we've we've held these stocks for quite some time. Okay. Uh, so Disney, Disney, we first purchased in 2016, LGI in 2021. So they, uh, we've had them for a while now. Okay. Now Disney, we've sold. Uh, I think we've we we sold a few months back. We sold half of the Disney position. Um, so, but it's. Uh, uh, still underperforming so it's just um we, we need to look at it okay we need okay. to really look at the, the wing whoever is following them through the, the story going forward and uh you know are they are they going to recover what's what's their market look like that sort of thing so this this is just um to highlight a couple of sort of non-performers now, CrowdStrike and uh, Nice are also underperforming, but we've just added those. And uh, CrowdStrike, there's a reason for for that, as I mentioned. But um, yeah. the other thing is, if we if we um, are interested in keeping these stocks, we should probably think about bumping them up. And in fact, I'm going to make a recommendation later on uh, to add to CrowdStrike. But okay. um, yeah, so. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Hanny. Um, Ready? Do you want me to make you presenter? Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. Uh, where is that? Okay, I made you presenter. Okay, I have two screens. You are able to see my laptop screen. You have to put it. Uh, it, it didn't give me option to choose oh, yes. which screen. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, we see stock screening tool. Okay, that's good. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, <laughs> first of oh, all. Go, ready, ready, yeah. sorry. Go to uh, go to slideshow up top on your menu. On your menu. Slide go to slideshow. Slide show. Here? It's why, yeah. it, no. No, in the, no, on the menu. You see the menu items? Yeah. yeah keep going, yeah, right slideshow. Yeah. Click. Okay. Uh, yeah. From beginning. Presenter view. Um, hmm. okay. On the very left, it says from beginning. This one? Yes, click on yeah. that. Uh, it should. Uh, okay. And then go to, the, the, now go, go to this. Go to settings. Sorry, Joanne. Huh? <laughs> you, you, you drive. I mean, you tell him. Because <laughs> you she just, just taught, She just taught me this, so I'm... <laughs> go go to this play settings. 
display the, settings. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Click that, and then yeah. swap. Hit swap. Yeah. Click that. Click. No. I did. There okay. you go. There, there Perfect. You go. Oh. Yeah. Click which. You can use your down arrow. Down arrow oh, to how do I go previous one. Back arrow, uh, up arrow to go previous. Use your up down okay. arrows to switch between the. Slides. There you go. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I wanted to uh, little bit more time, but I could not do because I had to run around today. Um, but I will do my best to, uh, and present the stuff I uh, included so far. Other ones I will try to make it up. Uh, in another session or uh, upload the slides. Uh, this uh, is a sc stock screening tools, um, various ways of various uh, websites and uh, that I'm familiar with and used and looked at them in the past time, including I'm sure there are a lot many other people are familiar with. Uh, the, the ones I wanted to include all, but I could not include all today are Fidel Fidelity Investments, uh, Merrill Edge or Merrill Lynch, uh, E-Trade, and then Better Investing SSG Plus, Better Investing Stock Central. I'm a subscriber for Stock Central. It has some predefined screens as well as uh, individual screens. Then uh, Value Line Screener, Value Line Screen. I'm a subscriber for Value Line 600, but uh, I checked it. Screener works. I did not get a chance to include these last four or five. Um, then Yahoo Finance also has a screener. Uh, I'm less familiar with the MSN Money screener. And of course, there are many other subscription uh, screeners. But uh, I, I have kind of covered uh, the first two and a little bit on Stock Central today. Uh, next one is uh, here, Fidelity Stock Screener. First, uh, in the menu, uh, there are some uh, uh, predefined uh, screeners by their experts and some you, you can choose individually your criteria. Uh, this is the flow path for Fidelity, Fidelity uh, website, then go to new news and research uh, tab, then go to stocks tab, then go to screening tools. Uh, you can see the screening tools here. And if you click on that one, starts uh, stock screener. Uh, stock screeners, uh, next slide is, uh, stock screeners have two types. One is uh, the, their experts uh, defined st groups, uh, strategy wise and theme wise. And then the other one is user chosen ones. Okay, I will show you uh, one or two examples of each. Uh, this is the strategy screener and under that one, uh, there are uh, the six of them, but I'll show you one screen here, for example, because of the time limitation. Uh, the growth, generally we look at the growth as most important parameter for our club. Uh, next one is, this is the growth. Under growth, there are above average sales and earnings growth, focused on capital gains. Uh, I chose the, 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 this is the criteria for growth stocks on the left and out of which uh, any, I think a meeting ago or two meetings ago, we suggested look screen for top 20% uh, mid cap uh, growth, uh, out of which there are one is in the large cap growth and one is mid cap. I chose an example to for today 20% uh, mid cap growth um, because there are a lot of screens, so so much in the screening stuff. In the 20% mid cap growth, in the top 20% industry and they are in the JAX recommendation is buy or hold. Uh, this, this is the, um, the criteria, the total market capitalization, there are 1,454 score. And by the time we keep on screening, um, the, the five stocks make it, okay? And the five stocks uh, are shown on the next slide. And these, it shows gradual filtering, EPS growth, uh, the, then uh, all these criteria shows and 
final filtering shows five and these are the five i never heard of these five but uh, they happen to pass the screening criteria uh, of that uh, whatever they stipulated there the uh, uh, this one has eps growth uh, and some other details and the next criteria is uh, um, okay the, the pre the previous one ha shows the, there are multiple the criteria here one is search criteria based on and generally i looked at search criteria and performance and volatility and valuation growth sometimes analyst so i will show you a couple of these more uh, details uh, screens the this one is valuation grow and growth because that's where uh, we emphasize uh, eps growth um, then uh, the uh, one other thing i would like to mention here is the these allow us to download the any of these uh, screen stocks in the form of uh, excel excel spreadsheet okay you can print as well as excel spreadsheet so that's an advantage the uh, next one is analyst uh, opinions we, we often look at the uh, what is the analyst consensus i'm showing uh, outlined here ibes uh, most more commonly used they are all buy except this one hold um, then uh, any other criteria you would like to consider if they are available here uh, this is the uh, themes right uh, the, the, uh, no, the, the strategies and the next one is themes which are defined by the website and uh, there are out of these there are uh, managed fidelity managed uh, uh, ones which are us large cap large cap index dividend income and environmental focus and international but you can, we can choose and dig into details of any of these uh, for screening purposes uh, feed for uh, in, for example one, one large cap i uh, want to show you where is the large cap okay this one um i i am showing you the details here uh, top 10% have 31.7 percentage of the portfolio and it is the largest these are the top 10 stocks and um, they are, they make the one of the large cap themes the next one is um, our user selected screening user selected screening has uh, multiple uh, aspects of the criteria uh, one of them is most popular uh, that they choose and all others we can choose the details in each one of them many many details here i'll show you a couple of examples here most popular is the, you know, the these are the uh, various criteria in the most popular ones uh, in which I will show because we often look at the forward EPS growth at three to five years uh, long-term growth I will show you that uh, details uh, next slide uh, next slide is the under the long-term growth we can choose various percentages I choose one uh, this uh, very high growth itself 151 stocks and I just showed about 10 of them here and these have large growths uh, we can choose generally if you chose very high 151 and high 188 so total will be um, some 300 and odd um, we can we can uh, some of them uh, are familiar with like advanced auto parts uh, uh, carnival corporation cruise corporation these are familiar with then uh, next slide is uh, uh, forward eps growth 100 percent shown here downloadable downloadable spreadsheets uh, i chose a greater than 100 percent and uh, screened and these are the ones uh, just example i showed and we can always download these as a spreadsheet and the next one is uh, uh, one i chose these these user criteria uh, earnings based and company value based we typically look at earnings growth under under uh, company growth there are uh, i chose eps eps growth long-term growth 
and by the way this one will be same as the one i showed so i'm not going to show this again and uh, revenue growth is another criteria we often consider uh, three year revenue growth five year revenue growth and these uh, uh, i think an example is shown on the next slide uh, uh, out of uh, pr price par uh, this another criteria price performance how is it doing generally i look at uh, one year growth and one year growth uh, in one year growth uh, i chose again to limit the samples example a very high growth is uh, already 756 uh, and this is just first few shown here uh, this is uh, high growth and next one is uh, uh, Jack's uh, the this is analyst opinions I chose two examples in the analyst opinions like Jack's investment uh, outperform outperform and outperform has uh, uh, what 435 screens the, uh, the stocks and first few are uh, I think I noticed our IAPR is in there maybe in the next one uh, this is the Refinitiv. Refinitiv is again commonly used. I chose uh, uh, where, uh, IB, I think this should be IBES estimates. IBES estimates are here on the right side and they're all strong buys and strong buys are uh, 386, plenty of them because all the stocks are doing good. Um, the next slide is the uh, five year, five year, where is it? Did I go? Yeah, next, the, uh, this is in addition to IBS growth, I chose a, a various analytical opinion also. So uh, the first one is the screen 386. And if I choose the, in addition to that one, uh, this screen by uh, the narrows down to 47, for example. So if you use, multiple criteria at the same time the numbers come down drastically uh, smaller and smaller okay that means they are making multiple criteria at the same time and uh, uh, next slide is uh, this is an example i thought this may not be directly related to the criteria but these slides are next couple of slides are interesting for i thought uh, you, you, you may want to look at them uh, this is a five year uh, growth rate for all these various sectors uh, nicely listed one and five and ten years you can see the, how our our uh, hours compare and the next one is fidelity gives one more interesting couple more interesting where are we on the cycle economic cycle and for example yes uh, it was somewhere here and then we climbed up this year because they are all doing good and uh, this is you can see generally go go this way and because we are doing good uh, they, we are climbing up the curve we are we are not entering the uh, contraction mode yet and this is the what sector is doing good and uh, early like for example we are mid or uh, late so mid only money is doing good and late is uh, more okay and then the Merrill Lynch, uh, if you have a couple more minutes, I'll show Merrill Lynch a uh, few slides. Ready, uh, Merrill Lynch. Uh, these, ready, these two screens, Merrill Lynch and Fidelity. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to have an account, right? Um, Fidelity, you have to have account. Merrill Lynch, you have to have account. I have E-Trade and E-Trade, I have only one account. All you need is open with one account because yeah. it gives you access. Yeah, we can't uh, we can't access any of these in Canada, unfortunately, because oh really? Uh, Even if you have yeah. an account, uh, you can't. Yeah, because you, you, uh, even if you have an account, yeah, they're not available in Canada. Like Merrill Lynch uh, is not available in Canada. Howard and, Merrill Lynch. Uh, Howard Merrill Lynch. <clears throat> yeah, Merrill Lynch is not like I can't open. Anyways, sorry, doesn't matter. But I'm just uh, saying these are. Uh, oh wow! I just wanted yes. to confirm. I thought fidelity is worldwide. Um, yeah, you have like you have to have an account. You can't. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but for example, E Trade, I I did three four accounts. I all squeezed out, and only I have only one account. 
in, in E-Trade, but I, I can access E-Trade. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I know the, uh, I didn't hear uh, time timer from Joanne, so I'll go uh, explain a few more slides on this one. Uh, all others uh, uh, got to- ready? Since we don't have as many um, quarterly reports, you can have time, extra time for your- Oh, that's nice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, in the Merrill Lynch, again, uh, I have a very detailed uh, screeners. Um, under the Merrill Lynch, go to Merrill Lynch, then research uh, tab, and then under the research tab, go to screener tab. Under screener tab, uh, screen for stocks. Uh, there are all these are different criteria. Under each one, there are uh, several other menus, sub menus. Okay, I'll go through a couple of them um, because of the time. Uh, under this one, uh, there are popular screens as well as you can uh, have your own screener and save it also with under your own portfolio. Saved screen and these are all the uh, you can uh, you can um, the, assign the criteria and screen them. Uh, they, these give you choices. I'll show you a couple of them. Uh, under showing these, the, the, this is, I think, a popular screen. And uh, again, this has several uh, uh, tabs here. Your search, uh, today's activity, general information. Generally, I look at uh, performance, uh, ratings, and earnings growth. Okay. Uh, after your search criteria and today's activity, those are good good ones to uh, look at it. Um, the then uh, next slide is uh, under popular screens. That's the first tab. Uh, you have uh, common screens uh, formed by them. Then you have uh, uh, Bank of America security screens, Morningstar screens, uh, Sephra screens and S&P global screens. These are popular screens uh, available, okay? And uh, under each one, again, you can choose sub menu and uh, assign the criteria, sort your criteria. For example, uh, the, the, this one, I chose uh, uh, e under common screens, EPS revenue growth. Under EPS revenue growth, I chose uh, top 50% plus over five years, and five years, there are how many stocks? There are uh, 12. Okay, I think all the 12 are shown here, and you can see that IIPR makes it because it's doing good, um, except one or twice because somebody was after uh, uh, somebody was after this one. Um, I think uh, what is that called? Options guy trying to knock down the price because one tenant uh, skipped the payment one month. Okay, so this is the uh, EPS and revenue growth. I'm focusing more on EPS and revenue growth because that's where generally we uh, screen them. And then uh, next one is uh, uh, Morningstar, for example. One example under Morningstar, terrific 10-year records. Okay, <laughs> don't ask me details. Uh, terrific 10 years, best one over 10 years. And uh, you can see there are 85 of them. I'm showing only 10. And uh, these are exemplary, exemplary, you know, kind of rating, um, Morningstar rating. And um, I, I showed an example here. For example, Adobe is a very good stock. ADP is a very good stock. Akama is a good stock. AMT is a good stock. Um, Okay, the next is uh, uh, the S&P, I wanted to show one example. I rank, I projected growth rate models. Um, and uh, under that one, there are 41 stocks. Okay, and under 41, like AMAT, I have AMAT. AMAT is really doing good, great stock, but the volatility on an everyday basis is high, but that that is a tremendous stock. Uh, Cigna was doing good, but until recently, I think it came down. Uh, FedEx, uh, another commonly known stock. CVS is commonly known stock. Uh, these are all make it. Uh, the, then next one is, uh, okay, I, I, um, because I'm, I was afraid of going over time and then 
I didn't have my own preparation time. Uh, I just included this one last few minutes. Uh, the another one, BI Stock Central, which I mentioned, I have subscription. I'll show you just a couple of slides on this one. Uh, Stock Central again have some predefined screens as well as a screener, your own screener. Under the predefined screens. Uh, these are the different predefined screens. If you go to there and the view the results, you will you will find out the what screens made this uh, month or this week criteria, uh, under which I see this is the second one complete roster of quality companies. They publish about 50, 60 stocks in this category, and uh, often they change. And I chose that one as an example. And this is the predefined screener called a roster of quality it's a, that's a they decide um, there are three sub menus you cannot display more than a few at a time here uh, under under this one i think address i heard in a net is great um, the cmg is she portal you heard all the needs deck is great stock i mean a really really great stock uh, the, the, and uh, here they measure the quality is around six to seven is good. And uh, hope, yeah, I ran out of time for preparation. <laughs> That's my last slide. I will try to include the other ones uh, next next meeting if I'm allowed. Ready? <clears throat> Ready? Got a question. Uh, yeah. Do you, uh, since the club has kind of uh, gravitated towards uh, Bakul's ratios, have you uh, gotten a screener that will get most of Bakul's ratios up front? Bakul no. ratio is, I think, is still, in my, my personal opinion, by the way, don't generalize it, it's a still limited circulation in the investment community. Well, well, okay, that's true. But for our club, uh, you know, the return on equity, return on invested capital, and uh, free cash flow over sales. Um, for our club, um, okay, these, yeah, yeah, your presentation is is for a general screeners, but I'm kind of asking this for uh, Emic, the uh, our club, which yes, has, sir. um, which has kind of. Ve not veered, but uh, kind of favors uh, those ratios so that we can get because uh, uh, you know these we, these these screeners are we... you get overwhelmed with with a lot of uh, you know you you get tons of data you get tons and you want to get them down you'd like to get screened down to some you know minimal yeah. of under ten. Some of, or, some of the rate buckles ratios can be obtained from the screener screener like uh, you see on my screen. P ratio, PEG ratio, EPS growth, uh, uh, they can be derived from that. Uh, but even when we calculate buckles ratio, we download the numbers and then calculate the buckles ratio. So we had to see uh, which screen they are available, the, the the basic data needed for buckles ratios. And I have also, to give a I have to give a warning. Buckles ratios is not. I I don't believe our club is focused necessarily on Bakul's ratios. It's an, just another tool that you may yeah. use. You don't, you are not required to use it. It's just, a, it's, and it can be something that's interesting to add more insight to a, a stock, but I wouldn't say it's a end all be all that, stock selection yeah, or Buckles, performance. Buckle's ratio is one criteria. There are hundreds of criteria mm -hmm. in these kinds. Yeah. And I think one of his, um, he said, if you find a tool that you like, you should stick with that tool and um, not necessarily use a bunch of different tools. I mean, that I think that was one of his recommendations. But it's every up to everybody's. I mean, you're the you're your own analyst, so you get to decide on what tools you like oh, to use, fine. or it's That's easy a, for you to understand. He came up recently those with ratios, like none of these have mentioned at any time they don't know who is buckle yet the value line yahoo finance amazon money uh e-trade merrill lynch F fidelity i'm familiar with and uh, i may have stepped on in other screening tools but uh, they are these are all very very detailed a lot of uh, stuff in there 
Well, I appreciate your presentation because I do have fidelity and you showed a lot of things that I've been in a class with them and they show things, but I think I'm going to go over yours a lot more and dig in because I have been in those tools, but I think I, I like the way you detailed it. Another thing is I did join Schwab. You can't access those without being a, a member, as Annie said. But I did uh, join Schwab recently because I like the way their page printed. I mean, their page when you're looking for the stock and looking for an investment and the information that's on there and how it looks. So I joined them, no money for a year. They gonna want some money after a year. And the other thing is, I, I, you know, you guys know I like to go and listen to all the uh, different clubs because obviously I have not a lot to do. But I just won a Stock Central uh, free one-year subscription that I haven't even signed in for. I, I just got the email that I won that for just being uh, a participant, not even participant, just being in the audience. And, uh, and there's a lot of good things that Better Investing gives out. And the fact that you even open that up to show how you use it, because I was thinking, oh, I don't know what to do with this. This is another thing I have to learn. So I do appreciate that as well. So thank you. Yeah, I, sure. and, I, I, and I want to add that it's free to sign up for Merrill Lynch and Fidelity in the United States. Like Henny said, if you're not in the United States, those services are not available, but yeah, they but, are uh, free to sign but, up. Uh, Annie, I'm really surprised. Uh, Merrill Lynch or Bank of America, uh, the, the uh, website and Fidelity are not available in, uh, I, I think there should be some other form available in some other form. They are worldwide. Well, uh, there they leave you out, yeah. I think Canada has their own there's other brokerages that they can use to get access to screeners. Yes. Uh, Value Line yeah. also has screeners. Uh, have you, do yeah, you have Value Line has screener. I have, I, I'm a subscriber for Value Line 600. So uh, uh, I don't use a screener much, but it is available. I checked it. Next time right. I will include some. Yeah. You, don't, you don't actually need to subscribe to Value Line 600 uh because if you get a uh, if you have a library subscription uh you can get access to that for free um, um and i think it yeah that's how i get it, it any any you're right but i moved from connecticut connecticut uh, library has free access i i don't know where my connecticut card is still valid for another year so i, I um florida is I, not yeah, I subscribe through uh, Fairfax County, and even though I don't live in the United States, they they mm -hmm. actually give me uh, access. Uh, I think it's twenty dollars a year uh, for to subscribe to Fairfax um, Public yeah. Library, and, and you get access to uh, both Morningstar, I think, and uh, Value Line. Yeah, I mean, Northeast Florida, Northeast Florida Library it is not, it has access to Morningstar, but uh, I think uh, Valley Line doesn't have. So I had to check where it is available, or if anybody can, can send me a link, uh, I will, uh, uh, I want to use it. I can send you the link for Fairfax, but I'll tell you, when you're joining, sometimes it's better to call and get assistance joining. And it's really easy to use and very affordable, especially since they're yeah. giving services to a non resident yeah. General access uh, has more uh, information there. Uh, Value Line has uh, allows me only two or three screens. Value Line 600 and uh, summary and index of the uh, overall, but uh, it, uh, it doesn't let me access other like individual stocks if I want to look at the uh, their quarterly report, they, it won't let me accept 600 uh, included in there. But Yahoo Finance also has good screener, fee, freely available. Uh, MSN Money, I'm not too familiar with, but it has some thing in there. And there are others. Uh, Thank you, Reddy. You know what, what, let's move on and do some quarterly reports. Actually, well, can you do Disney? We're curious. I mean, that's on, uh, 
one of the ones that Hanny's recommending that we take a closer look. So can you, I give you the screen to yep. to review Disney? Yep. Okay. Uh, before before you go, any comments on, shall I complete this before I upload it? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, monitor one. Are you able to see uh, my screen? Yes. Quarterly per report. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Disney had a a uh, encouraging uh, Q3. Uh, the main points that it achieved uh, almost 20% uh, total growth and in, in uh, a total segment operating income uh, and and about 35% up in, in adjusted earnings per share. Uh, entertainment segment was uh, was almost 3x above uh, year over year uh, due to the um, the um, uh, what is it DTC DTC is the uh, direct consumer uh, and content sales uh, profitability was uh, positive with the with the with the streaming business for the first quarter they were one quarter ahead of schedule uh, and um, and um, they had some uh, a couple of uh, big hitters with the uh, with movies. Inside Out Two became an all-time highest grossing um, film, 1.5 billion globally. And when it's combined with the Deadpool and Wolverine and um, and uh, Planet of the Apes, the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, uh, they earned uh, 2.8 billion. Uh, so that was a good uh, a good hitting hitting it out of the park. Uh, experiences, which are parks, uh, experienced a, a, a decrease about 3%, um, and that's expected to continue for a few more quarters. Uh, park, atten park attendance was comparable uh, year over year per capita. Spending was also slightly up, but expected demand moderation is, is expected to persist uh, for a few more quarters. The uh, subscribers in Hulu, uh, with Hulu, when combined with Disney Plus, added about 1.5 million subscribers um, uh, for the for the quarter. Um, Disney is planning to continue investing there um, with about five billion in the next five years in making films, movies, and in, uh, investing in primarily in uh, in the UK and in uh, parts of uh, other parts of Europe. Uh, for so 5.8 5. point billion in the next five years, uh, they're investing about 60 billion in the next 10 years in ex in the experiences uh, business. They're planning to add uh, four four new cruise ships on top of the four that are already in the works. Uh, there's Disney Magic, uh, the, not Disney Magic, but the the four that exist already: Magic, Wonder, and Wish. And they're planning to add a few more in in, uh, in uh, 2029. Um, and one, oh, one, the 2029 one is will be one from uh, from Tokyo, completely independently owned, which kind of surprised me. I, um, this is owned by Oriental Land and Company in Tokyo Disney Re Resort. Guidance has been uh, uh, is for the full year adjusted earnings per share growth is will be uh, is expected to be 30%. So it remains on track uh, for the profitability in in the streaming business. Um, the um, what else? Um, the uh, the stock, uh, you know, it's it's I think it's turning a, a point. It might be uh, it's I've got the uh, it's 0.2 to one odds of uh, you know it's on sale, but I think it's it may be turning a uh, yeah, turning a point because the streaming business is positive. It turned positive, uh, although I mean so it's a plus and a minus. I'm not really um, you know <laughs> wholly convinced, but it might be a good time to buy. Um, it's I had suggested a sell. Uh, uh, a while back, we sold half, 
And so it's down at, probably at its uh, lower turning point, Morningstar and um, uh, Morningstar, Yahoo, and what's the other, the uh, um, uh, Seeking Alpha are all positives. Morningstar is all positive on it, uh, more, more confident that, it, that it, on the businesses and the profitability for the next few years. So there's a number of analysts that are at least Morningstar and uh, uh, Seeking Alpha are those are, are positive on future prospects. They're leaning more positive than uh, in, pre in previous times. Um, what else? Uh, uh, let me show you some of the numbers. Um, So this is the financial uh, results. Revenue was up 4% year over year from uh, 22 to 23. Total segment income uh, for the, was up almost 19. Diluted earnings per share, uh, 35% from one to uh, you know 1.39. Free, free cash flow is down 24%. If, uh, depending on the segment, uh, this is, let me see, summarize segment in entertainment, four, sports, five, experiences, two. Uh, uh, eliminations, what was the elimination? The segment two is a reflection direct to consumer, to sports and other enter entertainment. These are fees paid to uh, DTC, let me see. So entertainment was up, uh, you know, from 400 to, you know, now it's 12, 1201. Experiences down. Uh, direct to consumer was up 15%. Linear networks down seven. So that's expected. Linear to networks is expected. That these are the TV. Um, uh, operating. Direct to consumer is up, you know, 96% from a loss of 505 to a loss of 19. So overall, you know, from going from 408 to 1201, uh, very good progress. These are key objectives I showed you. Just here's the trend to uh, foreign parks from fiscal year Q323 to Q3 to the most current. It's going on the negative trend. Um, it's at 2% and it was 13% uh, a year ago. Uh, parks and experiences, uh, let me see what is this? Oh, this is operating income. Uh, uh, again, negative trend. Uh, on the positive side, you know, they have, uh, bulls continue to say it's got a depth, you know, it's got a wide moat, uh, depth of, uh, the characters are timeless. Franchise and the content library is, is huge. Uh, ESPN, ESPN remains strong. Um, and the alert to Disney parks remains unmatched. Um, let me see. So it might be a good time to buy. Uh, uh, maybe I, I'm saying, I'm suggesting a hold. It's to see if, it, if the uh, strength continues. And um, yeah, so what else can I show you? I think that was it. Uh, I've, I've got most of the items uh, to be viewed in, in the analysis in Microsoft, in uh, Analyst. There's uh, Morningstar. I've got a few reports for, in Valley Lines as well. If you want to see Valley Line. Uh, oh, no, thank you. Well, that's. That's okay. great. Unless anybody anything has any questions. I um, have one question. I have one okay. question, uh, Joel. Yes. Uh, your low price is way low compared to the law. Recently, it has seen worst prices, and uh, the worst price is uh, lowest price is 78. Last uh, generally, tell I, me I wh consider. Tell me where you're, where you're asking regarding. Okay, price. Uh, you decide. 
Oh, selected low price is 71. Oh, okay. I thought he selected 51. Okay, 71. No, that's, that's typically, I typically select 80% uh, uh, from the current price. And I did yeah, this report on uh, Friday. Yeah, 80% is general guideline, but recently Disney has seen very bad times and uh, now it's slowly stabilized and uh, coming back up but uh, lowest price the last 52 weeks is 78.7 so generally I, I tend to take that one unless really it's a very uh, volatile i take uh, 52 okay. week low price okay oh yeah, 78 yeah 78.7 yeah I either round off to 80 or round off to 78, doesn't matter. Well, uh, okay, yeah. uh, we can adjust this, but uh, okay. Um, and yeah, just try it, just try it, Hoel. All right, well, um, last time I we, we, we spent some time uh, manipulating the SSG and it turns out that, you know, it, it's ignored essentially anyway. So, all right, 78, 78, 79. Manipulation is a very strongly negative word. <laughs> yeah, we just want to see. I mean, it, these are all judgments, and, and uh, then then I have, I have one more uh, one more uh, question. Okay, and same similar thing. High price. This is a very well established company, and uh, recently it has trouble. I we know that, but the high P is eighty. This is very high. Okay. Yes, very high, and. Yeah. Okay, so and 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 your uh, earnings are not the latest. One one point one five is not the one point one five. Hold on, one point one five is way below current earnings. Okay, so this one you all right? That's a very well established company. Well established company is in the range of thirty thirty five. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, PE has been, in other words, if you look up here, the highs have been. Uh, Not PE, up, up, earnings, uh, EPS, EPS forecast. Your, your EPS forecast is way below, less than half of what current uh, TTM. All right, earnings per share. Which is this. Um, Typically, uh, what I okay, this is way high, earnings per share is way higher. We, okay, we typically of, we typically peg it at, at whatever our sales forecast. No, no, there are several problems here, Joel. You you are extrapolating from trend line. Trend line is way below, and uh, the trend line considered negatives, and negatives push the trend line way way down. Uh, the first of all. Negative numbers do not have any meaning in logarithmic plot. This is a log log right. plot. Right. Okay, kill the kill the negatives first right away. Whenever you see, first thing is kill the negative. Okay, you see the trend lines, tremendous amount of change. And you see the forecast. Even if you follow the trend line. And if you follow the, um, the this. Uh, quarterly, quarterly the or, yeah. or the, this trend, no. you, you, your projection is way below estimates, even now. Uh, yes, uh, the, the, on the earnings per share. And the rationale that I've used in the past is that we should, pay, uh, you should be pretty, the, uh, the earnings per share uh, follows sales. Okay. Look at the 28, 2018, 2019. Okay. Earnings per share? Yeah, earnings per share. The $8.36, $6.27. And five years from now, you're um, the uh, way 25. below. Yeah. Look at 28, 2018, 2019, which were stable. And recently it has uh, trouble because somebody is trying to bother the, uh, the company. For, for last two, three years, so what is that guy, hedge fund guy? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Look, look at even if it's your current assumption, that your projection is way below the dotted line. The dotted line is way above. 
dotted line is the forecast by the analyst estimates the dots the the three uh, circles blue circles what happens if you select quarter instead of trend yeah quarter or uh, select the quarter yeah okay so it's getting a, better he's, he's a little closer yeah yeah and uh, move the move the data line up uh, with your cursor up cursor push it up yeah that's that okay that's it that's about yeah yeah okay in that range okay do you see what i'm well okay i typically say earnings per share does not exceed sales growth for very long this is so not typical last last three years disney is not typical okay last three I, years I have is a skilling i have a different question um have they figured out the ceo issue that's one question second question um Iger is going to remain to 26 uh, you mean have they re uh, yeah. a replacement a, a sex right. successor i have not right. heard any news regarding that okay um that's that's a bit of an issue in my mind um the the second thing is uh in in streaming who who's the number one company in streaming netflix uh who's the number one in sports in sports uh disney probably disney is it espn yeah mm -hmm. okay who's the number one in experiences in experiences, it's Disney. Uh, uh, not, in other words, is it, is it not Universal? I uh, Comcast. Uh, I I don't think so. Uh, I think no. experiences is Disney, uh, and they're going to get some competition also with Netflix in their uh, Netflix houses. Uh, There's more of a you know attaching the uh, with the experiences. You're you're uh, you're attaching the the characters with uh, you know the, with the parks and cruise ships with uh, at least with Disney and not, and Netflix is also attempting to do similar with um, with their character with their movies as well like Squid Game and, and the like um, and it'll be a certainly not not with the expenditures as Disney has gone with uh, real estate but um, it might accomplish very similar results according to some of the I guess my like my concern is that they're they're competing with some fairly large companies like Netflix is well established in streaming you have other competitors in parks um, you have other competitors in cruise lines um, you have an issue around the the whole CEO uh, succession so I, I don't, I, there's a lot of uncertainty, I guess, in the future about whether repeat and be grow their earnings sufficiently uh, to get, you know, to, to get back on track and to get, um, uh, to grow at a, at a rate of return that would beat the market. Yeah. Right. I agree. Okay. So, I'm just like I don't I don't um, it they could they could do it I don't know um, but there's a lot of uncertainty around that and so if we're looking at a portfolio that's lagging the benchmark our club portfolio we might want to look at companies that have a little bit more uh, upside certainty around the upside and the growth this one to me is you know there's a lot of a lot of unknowns yep and i've stated that in the past i've stated that in the previous uh quarterly report of q2 uh, i did that i've done that this uh, this time as well there's a lot of unknowns um uh there's analysts that it's suggesting that it's time to buy but you know it's a you know nobody has a crystal ball i did have i did state that in my pert at the very end uh, may end up uh, doing reasonably well over the long haul. 
Uh, yeah. But outperforming S and P might be take a while. Um, and uh, Morningstar considers um, Disney to be a wide moat stock, yep. so meaning that it has a significant competitive advantage. Uh, mostly, I think, because of its brand, its brand recognition, intellectual property, um, and then it's able to monetize content across. You know, theme parks, merchandise, streaming. I mean, I don't know. I think maybe Disney has a chance to be a, a good turnaround, but maybe we sell it and maybe we buy it when it back when it starts. I don't know how long it's going to take to turn around. Or, well, the other the other thing, like I just look at, you know, like if you look at demographics, it's it seems that you know we have an aging population. And Disney is really aimed at sort of younger families, kids, that sort of thing. So, and I'm, you know, for me, it's like to go to Disney is extremely expensive to go to a theme park. Um, so, you know, Hannah, you don't know any Disney adults. I know so many <laughs> Disney adults, it's crazy. I, Annie, I don't get Annie, it. Hanny, long time ago, long, long time ago, I went to with my kids uh, when they were small. To Disney, I saw 80 year old woman, 90 year old woman coming in wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I, that I, have been with the family. I, 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 I asked somebody, I, I'm surprised to see these people. They said, oh, they grew up with Disney. So then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I took, I took my kids a long time ago, but, you know, it's just, it was, um, it was a torturous experience. <laughs> <laughs> My dad used to call it dismal land. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Uh, you know, you're waiting in line for a long period of time. You're paying yeah. a lot of money. Um, I just, I, I don't know. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of uncertainty here for me anyway. That's that's, that's my two cents. For... That's okay. probably probably true me true for me too, but that completely opposite for the kids. Yeah. Well, that the kids you took them or I took them. <laughs> okay, they are the biggest thrill for them, right? So, I heard somebody trying to chime in. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I just looked at because uh, he mentioned something about the CEO, and I co-piloted it. Uh, uh, suggested by Haney to you, <laughs> and it says that Eager or Iger is going to be there. He got to hit the contract through 2026, so and that's not long. It seems like the same issue about the CEOs is going to come up so soon. You can comment. Uh, I Igor came back because the guy whom he appointed was not doing good, and he he uh, he Perfect. has to step in. Yeah, but I'm Traffic. sure I'm sure they are they are searching for next CEO for a while now. Okay, and they'll have time to train him. That's true. Yeah. Okay. But if if he, if it is a next one is a, from inside Disney. So he's kind of a semi-trained. If it is outsider, yes. Okay, um, let's move on. You know what? We haven't heard about LGIH for a long time, I don't think. Mina is here. Mina, do you want to um, give us an update on LGIH? Yeah, well, so I've just been about it. We're just in Q2 now, so we have the annual report. But, and, but uh, what, is a, what is a Joel's conclusion with his latest changes? My Disney. conclusion, I mean, I, I put it at a hold, right? I'm leaning towards a hold. Okay. It's, you know, there's, in, it's encouraging, but like, like I said over here, the likelihood that, you know, that it's going to up, outperform the S&P, it may take a while. Uh, so if we find a, buy, a better stock, let's get that instead, and then probably dump uh, Disney. Um, uh -huh. well, can we just take a look? Back at your um, SSG with the change to the um, EPS. Just go to your next tab. Oh, what's that? Now it's way out of whack. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you want? 
Uh, I just wanted to see with the increase in the EPS. So, so your average high PE is way high. So I, I would like, um, I would lower that. No, go back to valuation. Back to the, your other tab. Because like Reddy was saying, it's an established company. So your average high PE. Yes. Uh, all right. Yeah. Is maybe put it at 35, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that, the 35 is still a little aggressive. Okay. 30. Uh, well, well, well established companies is between 25 and 30. Okay. Because uh, last three, four years is not doing good. You can choose 30. That's fine. But 80 is way high. For this know, old company. Uh, when it comes down to high PEs, I was in a training class recently and I really appreciated it. And they said if the numbers are, I did a, an SSG and I, I put my numbers low and I said my reason for putting it low was because every time I put, I try to match it with what I see, I told lower it, lower it, lower it. But I like what they said. If that's what it's saying, and you're trying to read what it's saying, wouldn't you put what it's saying or close to what it's saying instead of lowering it to 30? If it's out of proportion to what you want, then just don't to choose the stock, but don't lower it to 30 because there's no rule saying it has to be 30. The rule might be closer to if, if you want to choose it, the uh, BI suggests, you know, that's a good, you know, point, but not that you're supposed to change the numbers all the way down to 30 if it's, if it's uh, uh, telling you different. No, Anitra, it has two major problems for last three, four years. One that's is- no, I get that. And what I'm saying is if it has a problem, let's move on and let it go, not let's change the numbers it, to something to match it. They're kind of resolved. Uh, recently, recently the uh, Disney uh, law case uh, with Florida State settled in Disney's favor. Uh, actually, Hoel, can you click on the ten-year history on the valuation yeah. and return? Click on that, and then see that where it says five years and ten years. In the top left, A B, down, A B, A B C D E line line A B C D E. Yeah. Three, it's right down. Next. Go down ten You're years. Right there, right there. Yeah. So previously, the um, price, the high was in the twenties. Yes. And then it pops up to one eighty nine, one hundred two ninety, because it's all out of whack for those years, Anitra. So yes, okay, I think so. that. Yeah, I think that, like You're Reddy was saying. It's a five-year average. Don't look at the 97. In that case, you're going on with the 42.3. And if that's the case, then I would use a 30 or 35 or no. something. Yeah. Closer to no, I, that, I, but not to the 97. Yeah. Strike out okay. 102. Strike out 102 and 91. You'll get in the right range. And but the uh, biggest thing is that uh, this keep, is keep, 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 keep 23. Keep, keep 23. 0.5 strike out 91 that's the latest or yeah, the yeah. But it's, yes it's just recovering yeah you, you are back to 23.5 average if you compare disney's <clears throat> if you compare disney's pe even at 34 to microsoft uh microsoft has got a pe ratio of 35 36 and if I look at the growth and the earnings power of Microsoft versus Disney, there's no comparison. Um, That's a totally different industry. I, don't know I know, I know it is, but you're, yeah. but you're still, I mean, you're you're valuing their earnings potential at the same level that you're valuing Microsoft. Yeah, but any nobody's after Microsoft. But one uh, hedge fund guy is after Disney for last few years, and then he gave up. And then uh, uh, Disney had a lawsuit from oh, Florida. I, Finally, I know, I know, won. I know all that. I know all that. I'm just saying, yeah. like your 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 PE ratio is how much you're paying for earnings, right? So that's true, but that's temporary. 
well, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> you know, it just depends. I mean, like, I don't, I, okay, I guess what, what would have to happen in order for Disney to regain market the segments? A new, new CEO. Well, maybe yeah, but what would they have to do? I mean, I guess this is that, that like, uh, you know, the, the numbers are the numbers. You can fudge them, you know, in any way you want to make a point, but I guess I don't, I don't see the story. I don't see the, the runway uh, for this company to, you know, to compete and beat um, the, its biggest, its biggest competitors. I don't, I don't, what, you know, I don't, like somebody, if someone can articulate that, um, you know, that that's where you, you could make a case for it, but I don't see the case. I agree. Yeah. So, uh, Joel said it's a hold to him and we're going on to Nina next because we've already been through this one. He's out. Okay. Can we, can we move on to Mina? Are we ready? Yeah. So I don't, I can't share my screen just because I'm using uh, my work laptop and the security. Okay. Do you um, just want to talk about it or do you want yeah. me to bring up? So something? that's fine. I mean, I, I have the uh, IZK file saved in the drive, if anything, but uh, the SSG hasn't, I mean, it, it is reporting um, or suggesting a hold at this time. And I appreciate Hanny's comments about how we need to kind of make a decision given the size of it on our portfolio. But uh, essentially, Q2 for LGIH was quite good, actually, uh, surprisingly well. Earnings per share beat um, analyst expectations, so uh, reported $2.48 um, earnings per share as opposed to two twenty-four. dollars expectation. Revenue was slightly down um, at $602 million a quarter, uh, the, this quarter, down about 6.5% from uh, the expectations, but still considered a robust report and still up over Q1. Um, and just by all metrics, it seems like LGIH has improved its performance compared to um, both 2023 um, as a kind of complete year and um, compared to Q1. Uh, I'm sorry, I have here the, um, there's a list here. I mean, essentially every financial, so in terms of House closings, they're up over the quarter. Uh, revenue is uh, up over the quarter. The average sale price of the home is now at $355,000. Last year's at $351,000, so that's also increasing. Um, the average communities and absorption rates, so it essentially that's, uh, the amount of homes that are actually sold in the communities that they're offering is increasing uh, compared to, I mean, it's its highest since it's actually it's the highest it's ever been. Um, so, uh, growth margin percentage again up this year. The grows um, the net income slightly up from 2023, significantly down from the kind of pandemic years 2020 to 2022. But um, it is rebounding; it's higher than it was in the preceding few years. So um, management is optimistic based on their call. They actually adjusted um, company guidance for Q3 and for the remainder of the year. Um, Sorry, where did I have that note here? And so we were expecting higher returns this year. They're also banking on um, a more favorable macroeconomic condition with reduced in uh, interest rates. Um, I think the latest inflationary reports in the States were good. So projections for um, a rate cut are getting more, uh, or sorry, those who are projecting a rate cut are more and more confident. So if that goes through, of course, house price, you know, real estate is one of the first industries to um, kind of benefit from from um, from from lower costs of borrowing. So it also seems that LGIH has been able to reduce some of their expenses um, by increasing both their profits and also just kind of re reducing their costs um, and have higher um, profitability than they have in a while. There, the some of the downsides that we have to worry about or yeah just revenue continues to be growing at a lower pace than it has historically so when we first bought the company it was um they were earning more so that 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 of course is going to be uh, it seems to be more a, con a condition of the market rather than 
um, the fundamentals of the company or the leadership. I mean, those things have significantly changed. Um, other things to report for the quarter is that they've uh, another significant stock buyback was completed, I believe, eight million shares, um, and there is still about 130 million dollars remaining in that buyback plan. So more shares to be uh, the buyback to continue. Um, so essentially, the the, the SSG when I did complete it, I, I used um, the market estimates. Are uh, a low range price of seventy four dollars, so I use that as as my uh, my low price. Um, the average PE is increasing, so we are at the five year average high. Um, I mean, it's currently just slightly over, as you can see from the screen. Thanks, Joanne. Um, so I use a thirteen uh, for the high PE, assuming that we're going to see still some. Um, we you know we still have the reduction in revenue. Um, but earnings are kind of improving, so I, I think it'll be temporary. But with a seventy low price of seventy four, um, it seems to me that the BSG to me provided a a, a, a hold. I think the, my upside down ratio is like one point one six. So we definitely did something different. I'll do different. Let me just check my numbers. Um, I was a full time sales. Was your, what was your uh, sales, please? Oh, 10 percent. I used 10 percent and 5 percent for EPS. So, because in the previous okay. annual report and the first quarter, um, the group asked a consensus that I had the EPS too high because I used kind of a little bit more of the traditional numbers in conjunction with um, estimate forecasts, which were a little bit higher. I mean, um, I think S I think BSSG has a five year, but being abundantly cautious, abundantly conservative, I used a 5 percent uh, EPS growth rate. A 10% sales growth rate. Um, those things combined with a average high P of 13.5, pardon me, gave me a, yes, gave me a high forecast price of 141, which was kind of consistent with um, analysts that, uh, analysts forecast. The, the numbers I saw were uh, as high as 160, uh, with a low price set at 174, and so. Uh, my high price ended up being just shy of $142, um, and with a low price of 74, I got an upside down ratio of 1.3 to one. So, in the hold category, um, the stock price itself is rebounding. Uh, it is down for the year quite significantly, as we know, um, but it is up in smaller metrics. So for example, the past week, it's up about 6%. In the mat last month, we're only up about 71 cents net. So um, the last six months, about we're down $11 a share, so down 10%. Um, year to date is down 20%. So we're, it, is, it is rebounding. Um, the low price we hit for the year was in July. So in Q2, we got down to $84, 84.6 USD a share. Uh, and now currently trading at 104 and a half uh, a share. So it is a hold for now in terms of, it seems to me that there's nothing really fundamentally different about the company um, than when it was performing well and when it was performing poorly. The only difference to me seems to be the conditions surrounding it. Um, one other positive that I found in my research was that they're also changing a little bit their strategy to create more affordable entry level homes for first time home buyers and to also kind of um, service that into the market. So to me that, that seems to be a positive in, in, in creating a little bit of a moat for those external factors. And if we do have affordable housing, the market will still be there, even though maybe the market, the, the number of consumers will diminish or shift, but at a, at a certain price point, I mean, house, housing and um, is one of those kind of fixed assets where people are always, um, are in need or there's always a need so um they're also aiming to increase market share with that with that approach so my recommendation would be to hold pending either um q3 when we can see if there's going to be a significant rate cut if we do go you know going phase points then we might see a jump in the stock right if there's a if there's a sudden um, increase in demand for housing. Um, alternatively, we can also try and recoup, and well, in addition, additionally, we should be able to hopefully recoup some of the initial investment 
right? I don't, I don't think it's necessarily, there's no urgency to sell at a loss, essentially, is my, my conclusion. So if we're able to wait for the next quarter with the increased company guidance, there is optimism for the romance rest of the year. There's also optimism for, for macroeconomic perspective. So to me, it's a hold pending of a little bit more of a rebound in the price. Um, and at that point, we can kind of consider if there's, um, if we want to still be in this industry and we can consider if there's a challenger as a stock. Alternatively, if the performance continues to increase and they're doing well um, with headwinds and, you know, again, lower interest rate environment, then potentially we consider a buy to um, get up to that 5% number. But for now, I think we should, um, or my recommendation would hold for, for either of those indi indications. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have a question, you know, with the election and promises of uh, giving first time homeowners, like, I don't know, I don't know if it's 25,000 mm -hmm. towards their first time home buyer purchasing, right. if that would affect this stock. I think definitely, especially at the price point of the average price, uh, consumer price for a house is three hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. Then I think a twenty-five thousand dollar contribution to a down payment would be pretty significant. We're not talking about, you know, a million, two million dollar homes. Um, yeah. So I think twenty-five thousand dollars would be a could really get a lot of people across that affordability barrier there. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I think because we don't need cash uh, selling a stock. This particular stock probably isn't a good idea right now. But yeah. I don't know. It's up for discussion. If somebody wants to sell it, we can do um, when we vote. But somebody wants to make a motion. OK, um, I want to, can, uh, unless, let's see. Piero, you have Amazon. Christopher, you have Qualis. I think Christopher, you already did a recent report, right? Uh, I alluded to it a little bit, yeah. But okay. I didn't go super in depth last last month because we did um CrowdStrike. I think that's why we oh. talked about Qualis a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, I really quick. I want to go over Schwab because it's been a hold for so long, and I really feel like I, it needs to be viewed by uh, everybody. Let's see, I want to get the screen. How do I show my screen? Let's see, hold on a second. I'm going to make, okay, don't press that, Christopher, because I'm going to make myself presenter. Okay. Okay, so Schwab, uh, maybe I should show my SSG. Okay, so this is Schwab. Uh, I know Reddy would say, oh, your estimate, your projections uh, too low, but um, I also use compared against the value line. I use these compared my estimates against their five-year estimates. It's a a little bit under, but uh, Schwab was hit pretty hard by the whole banking. Um, when all those banks were went under, people were taking out their um, accounts and they got affected by that. And now they're making a somewhat of a turnaround. So, and right now it's not at its lowest, but, uh, they are having better, I guess, better than um, the analyst estimates. They're exceeding the estimates. So I, okay, so what I need help with is my judgment. So I struck out the first five years. I don't know if that's recommended, but um, if I don't, if I have the first five years in there, it really changes my, um, because they were certainly on a trajectory up until uh, 2023. And then it started, it just really took a a fall. And then it's just starting to turn the corner right now with the 
earnings and the um, pre-tax profit, they're still, uh, the total assets are still down and sales are just starting to uh, turn the corner. So, and I really don't know what to make of when I evaluate the management um, because everything uh, that I'm reading about Schwab is in positive remarks about it. And one of the um, things for evaluating banks, we have a bank uh, assessment and it always says uh, about the debt to capital that it should be, I think, well, let's see, what is it? it should be lower than, let's see, because I, I recommended a whole because their debt to capital is 65% and it should be under 35. I, I'm not sure if my numbers are correct. So, um, well, I mean, that's the current, it was tw in 2023, 59%. Current is like 65%. Uh, I, I just, to me, this, uh, evaluating this stock is non-standard because it's a bank and we have we do have this bank evaluation checklist that you go through uh, Joanne I I, yes. I don't I don't know a lot about <clears throat> uh, the banking side of Schwab but uh, until recently uh, uh, they well, they they recently bought TD Ameritrade. Right, that was a while ago, wasn't that like a that's yeah, been a couple years now? Yeah, like a year now. year ago or something. Okay. Um, for for me, it was like just uh, six months ago because TD Ameritrade was owned by TD Canada, um, which is one of the big banks in Canada, and mm -hmm. um, they have like by far the best options trading platform anywhere okay um and i don't know how much they paid for uh for td ameritrade but i think they bought it because because of uh think or swim which is the options platform and mm -hmm. for uh which uh, creative i think there are people that are now and td went as far as trying to basically copy their um the the options trading platform in in canada they hired the team that did think or swim and they're they're building it from scratch and that's uh, that's what they're flogging here uh, the reason i think they sold that business is because there was um uh, there was they got um uh, charged with some sort of issue regarding money laundering. There were some of their employees in the States were uh, taking money uh, from, I don't know, foreign companies or something to to launder money and they were they were charged. And I think that had something to do with it, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, and this was TD Ameritrade or Schwab? No, TD Bank in Canada. Oh, TD Bank, oh. Yeah, their, okay. their, risk, their risk process uh, was not, what it should be they're they're a very legitimate bank they're one of the largest banks in the world but they just kind of were asleep at the wheel in the u.s mm. and so they decided to get out of the u.s they have a small um high net worth in in the state is on is on the u.s board um so uh although he doesn't tell me very much but anyways um so i Bottom line is, I think that they probably took a hit when they when they bought TD Ameritrade, and that's probably why their their debt is so high. And I mm. think lo long term, that business is gonna is gonna um, they're gonna realize the gains from that. Um, now, I don't know anything about the banking side, but I I do know a little bit about the trading side because okay. I used to use it quite a bit. So, um, and I think the banking side is a smaller portion than the brokerage side i think the yeah. brokerage side is a a bigger part of there but uh, unfortunately they got hit 
uh, you know, got hit as a bank. Yeah. You know, as far as investors were concerned. So, um, I mean, we've we've held this stock for a while now. I think it's I can't remember when we first bought it. Uh, like let me see if two thousand six, maybe sixteen. I mean, it's almost like eight years. Or, yeah, so. let me see if I can get the. I think it's I I I don't know my personal opinion just from what I've read about it is that it um, once they get past the um, all of the integration issues with TD Ameritrade and uh, if they can reduce their their debt they you know it'll um, that that brokerage business is pretty lucrative now okay. in the in the US I know there's a lot of competitors um, and you know there's people offering um, like zero fees for for trading ETFs and things like that which again we don't have here but um, so I don't know what the competitive landscape is like but I know that uh, a lot of people use the thinkorswim platform for options trading because it's it's quite robust and it's probably the best one out there okay well then I'm gonna hold to my uh, judgments and Thank you for that, very much for that we, insight. We we bought it we bought it in 2019 was the first oh, purchase. Oh, yeah. I thought and okay. we bought it for thirty three dollars. What's uh, sixty five sixty six? And okay. so far is about. Oh, I think you're cutting out. Yeah, my internet is terrible. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I said my, my the gain on it we gained our gain on it was about ninety four percent. Okay. Um, I guess that we we might consider if we think it's going to go up again, we might consider. Um, I don't know what our percentage is. Oh, this is stock as we have. A higher percentage of the stock, right? It's not like a low percent. It's a uh, six six point five percent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's in the range. All right. All right. Maybe we keep an eye on it, and if it gets into the buy range. I I have a uh, question or doubt. I think Haney showed a while ago the bank stocks and. Uh, uh, REIT stocks, REIT stocks have to be analyzed on a different basis. Yeah, these, they are, see they, if you look at the, um, this bank, it has this extra uh, return on average assets and historical total assets. These are extra um, stats that aren't in part of uh, regular tickers, stock tickers. Yeah, but but bank sales are not typical sales right so um what all we, they, we also do is this separate bank evaluation checklist is is this data from is this data from morning star or value line this data yes uh, say i get it from their 10k Allowance for credit no, loss. No, the, the plots, pl plots data. Oh, it must be from Morningstar. It's all from Morningstar. Is this? Yeah. Is, did you is, did you did you take a look at the numbers from Value Line also? Yes. But okay, I can't really one. use the Value Line. I I mean, yeah. I I find this stock really difficult to follow, just frankly, because it's so different from other stocks. Oh, if anybody, I've had this stock for a while, so if anybody would like to trade, <laughs> if they're interested in uh, researching uh, banks or brokerage bank stocks. Yeah, I think, and actually that's probably a discussion we have to come have pretty quickly here is um, the rotation of stocks, because we're actually not, we're supposed to rotate every two years. 
So anyway, that's a, another topic we'll probably address next month. Uh, is, there any, is, is there any member in our group uh, in banking bank industry or related? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, so really yeah, quickly yeah. right now, we yeah, are a little bit yeah. behind. <laughs> Sorry. Who was that? I, yeah. I pay a lot of bank. <laughs> okay. Um, let's quick go to the open mic. Anitra, do you want to take the microphone and talk to the guests? Um, I can unmute uh, Brian. The uh, <clears throat> great meeting. The uh, I enjoyed the, the discussion on Disney. Uh, we have it in our club, and uh, we watched it go from over 200 to uh, 90. Um, and uh, so we're we're trying to figure out how in the future to um, watch the actual price chart, put um, discussion points uh, both below and above the current price, and when it gets there to have a discussion on what to do and uh, not uh, rely on uh, SSG, which is a stock selection guide which is gathering data for uh, purchasing or selling uh, versus another one. Uh, so that's what we're fighting against and uh, enjoyed the discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, Anitra, are you on? Uh, or you're, I can't, we can't hear you, Anitra. We see your mic's unmuted, but I can't hear you. So we'll just continue. Um, Jennifer, do you have any comments? Yourself muted. Okay. Um, we'll wait till Jennifer comes on. Mel, uh, Mel yourself muted. <coughs> Jennifer, or Mel, is yourself muted? So Jennifer and Mel, you're both unmuted. So when you want to come on, just give a holler. Uh, Serena, you're self-muted. Oh, hi, Mel. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Mel. Oh, hi. Um, uh, yes, on, on Disney, our club sold that, uh, I guess, uh, quite a few months ago, we didn't consider it to be a uh, growth stock and we just saw a lot of uh, uh, competition as was noted in the discussion. Um, I guess a, a question I have is your cash holdings, uh, I guess you're assuming you get no return on them, but if you held them in a money market fund, you would be getting uh, what, maybe 5%, 4 or 5% now. Just curious if, uh, if how, how you regard your cash holdings and any, uh, any cash that it, it could generate. Um, because we don't use real money, um, we haven't really taken that into account, but I, I agree with you if, if we were, you know, if that money was sitting in a in a brokerage account, it would be earning four or five percent. So um, we would be getting a return on it for sure. Well, you know, uh, either that or you know, a short term bond fund or something. I know you don't do right. bonds, but just just a just a comment. And lastly, um, uh, I know you didn't cover Qualys tonight, but uh, Qualys, which is similar to the uh, CrowdStrike and maybe a little bit too nice. Its stock price, as I recall, is going down, uh, has gone down quite dramatically. And uh, uh, I guess uh, it would be interesting to know uh, what's what's going on there. And uh, if, since you were showing a profit on it, uh, maybe it's time to maybe uh, take some money out of that and put it into something that uh, has a better growth potential. Anyway, that's my three cents for tonight. 
Thank you, Mel. I and I just want to let our club know that Mel would like to become a member of our club. Uh, Mel, are you available for a stock study next month, or you're not yep. going to be around? Oh, you are. Okay. Yes, I am. So, I so, Hanny, we have you down as uh, doing a stock study next month. Is that correct? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, that's possible. Uh, I haven't. Okay. I haven't checked. Um, oh, maybe not. September, June. Oh, oh, you just September. did one in June. Uh, because let's see, I have yeah, I one with Jay. Uh, I'm happy to do another one. Oh, that'd be great. Um, because that, yeah, Mel is would would he's attended several meetings and he's uh, met the criteria for becoming a member. He's actually. I should forward you his, he wrote a really nice email about wanting to become a member and his experience. Mel, you actually, um, I don't know if you wanna give a little, you know, introduce yourself really quick. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I've uh, been a, a, a member of a stock club for quite a, a few years and I am a member of uh, Better Investing. Uh, and uh, I have given a couple of uh, talks to uh, member clubs. So uh, uh, I do have uh, uh, some experience, uh, you know, with the SSG and uh, doing some stock analysis. Well, great. Well, we, we welcome you and uh, hope to have you involved with our uh, next stock study. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. Let's see. Serena, you're unmuted. Oh, hi, Serena. Hey, um, I'm good for now. Just uh, try to attend as I'm a rookie. Um, still a lot to learn. And for the coming few months, I would love to, if it's possible, to join and be more diligent and hopefully to maybe join the club someday. Uh, that's, okay. That's me. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Serena. Um, Atul, you're yourself muted. Hey, I was just observing. Okay. Do you have any comments? No, thank thank you so okay. much. I I just uh, kind of was going in and out. I was doing some other things, so I apologize. Okay. About, yeah, but thank you. Yeah. No worries. Thank you for attending. Okay. Um, let's move on really quickly to uh, let's see. Our club business. Um, actually, what I want to do. Oh shoot. Um, just let's let's do uh, voting on buys or sells. Does anybody have a a buy or sell? I'd I'd like to uh, uh, make a motion to buy uh, more CrowdStrike to bring it up to five percent. The price oh, okay. has been depressed because of the um, uh, that that uh, issue they had with their update, and it went down quite a bit, and it's it's slowly going back up again. So uh, this may be a good time to uh, reduce our cost base by adding uh, some more. Okay. Now, if you, if you ask me how much we should buy, yeah, um, yeah. let me go ahead, and I'll do a quick calculation in the background. So okay, I'll go I'm on gonna, to another topic I, or have a I made you presenter, but don't accept it because I just want to uh, blank out the screen while I open up. But Ernitra, are you there? Um do you want to do the my iClub voting? We can't hear you, Anitra. I think your microphone's not working. Okay. Um, okay, so my iClub. Oh, 
I heard heard. Uh... Hello. Oh, hi. She is. Hi. I I've been doing everything. Yes, I'd love to. Tell me how. Okay, Please. go to myiclub.com and then you're going to do the um the voting. Is it? Is it do, you, do you keep cutting out or is it just my internet? Oh. Me? Hello. Hello. No, just in general, everybody seems to be cutting out. I think it's my internet. It's your internet. Oh. Well, we can hear you. We can still hear you. Okay, so I'm going to myiclub.com. And going where? Can you see my screen? Uh, well, we don't want to see your Well, I guess we can see your screen. Hold on a second. I'm going to give you the screen. And I'll tell you. I'll walk you through it. So okay. accept it. Accept the screen. Okay. I did. Okay, here I am, okay. and I'm going okay. to select, select the uh, I am, yeah, and then go to voting, and then add new motion. Uh oh, you don't have access. Why okay. doesn't she have access to that? Do you know, Hanny? Does she have to get? Um, I can check. Okay. In, In the meantime, I will do that. Okay. Well, if you share your screen, I can see you do it. Okay, hold on a second. Thank Thanks everybody for your patience. I'm gonna show my screen. Okay. Okay. I already did it. Oh, you made the motion? No, I, oh. I, she can now make motions. Yeah, oh. I can add now, yeah. Oh, okay, you add, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving oh, okay. you, you back, I'm gonna make you, give you back the screen and you just. Okay, all okay. right, I'm there you go. There you okay. go. So, uh, enter the text of the motion below, correct? Yeah. Right? Yes, um, but and Hanny will tell, Hanny will tell you how many shares or what dollar amount. Did anybody yeah. say no no. No, no? no, you don't hold put. On, hold on, hold on. First, we should discuss whether we should do that or not. Right. Right. So. No, I thought you make the motion and then we discuss. Motion, and we can yeah, we can vote up or down on the motion. No, you have to have someone second the motion, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But first, he has to make the motion. Okay. okay. Andy, uh, what's all your... right. Well, um, no, that's not so, how we've done it in past. We've we made a motion. Somebody has to second it, and then right. we put that on the uh, for the people to vote. Been seconded. Yes, so but he has to. She ha has to type in the motion, mo and then the motion made by, and then motion oh. seconded by. So I put in motion made by. No, no, it's okay. there's a field right below that. So just this, the motion's the actual. Oh, here it is. Like, okay, motion yeah. made by Nini. Okay, but wait a second. You first, you have to enter the text of the motion. Like, is yeah. it purchased or buy? Yeah, I need to. So, right there is what the question will. The members will receive. They'll receive exactly whatever you type in that box. And that question, okay. will, they're they're asked to vote yes, no, or abstain. So that usually we'll write something like motion to buy or sell x number of shares of x company and so i think or y company so i think that's okay so to buy uh 10 shares of crwd yeah okay okay anybody sec okay yeah i'll second the motion it is that who was that mina, mina. yeah oh mina, Okay. Hi. Okay. And then you want to. This is where we've gotten hung up before. Um, so you have to define. Days. You have to define when the voting end date. So. Um, Simple majority. Yeah. So above you, just a little bit of the the, the option right above that, Anitra. So. Uh, how many? Or the so, options are. Sorry, Anitra. The options are either vote as soon as the 
the majority of members have voted or until um, majority reached reached so if we have you know 12 members if as soon as seven vote for something it closes even though the other five haven't voted so it, it becomes, I'm not so okay. we, usually, we usually select that second one close voting sooner if majority is reached okay okay but like we that. don't want it to, and because today is the 19th right yeah Oh, that that would be ending September 18th. Yeah, we don't have that long. Oh, yeah, we don't want it to be a month. So, so we're going to end it on the 22nd or the 23rd. Uh, I would say the 21st. 21st. Yeah, that's okay. Good. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. And that's the reason good. for that is because the the price of the stock will change. Oh yeah, you're right. The longer okay. you wait. What's the simple majority versus two, three, three, four? Fifty percent plus one, right? The majority. Yeah, more so. than half. More than half. Okay. Okay. You want okay. that? And then you just and you just hit it once. Save yeah. motion and notify members. I've nothing will happen, and so I keep hitting it. But you just want to hit yeah. save motion and notify members once. Just click it once. I'm clicking it. Nothing's happening. Oh yeah, it is. It's happening. You just uh, okay. Yeah, just you, you can close the screen so we don't see your. Well, okay, you could see your vote. <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry. So when okay. when did we when do we have a discussion about it? Now. Now, because then you can vote yes or no. Okay. Okay. Uh. My question is, our discussion is, do we think it's going to go down or do we uh, more if there's any lawsuits or do we oh. actually think that it's uh, on its there's way definitely, up? There's definitely going to be lawsuits. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, but from, from everything that I've read, uh, they have the balance sheet to deal with. Uh, any lawsuits they will they they won't be uh, from what I understand and I don't know but that's just what I've read is that yeah. they're uh, they, they it won't it won't be material or they'll be able to deal with it but okay. their software isn't is um, is the best in the industry for what they do and okay. yeah, all of these companies rely on it. Um, yeah we work with there's a, there's a fine there's a fine line between uh, trying to recover losses from one of your service providers and uh, making sure that that service provider to your business. <laughs> so, yeah, I was gonna say I, we work with CrowdStrike on both sides, kind of as a vendor and a client. And um, my understanding too is that most of their major clients are sticking with them. They own huge share of the markets like of that of the data security market so the vast majority of their enterprise clients from my understanding at least or from what i've heard is uh, they are committed or are staying with crowdstrike so there's not even a it seems like they're going to continue to have the revenue sources um and the client base so if there are going to be some lawsuits i mean it, it'll be yeah big dollar amounts but it shouldn't affect hopefully their market share too much okay um, we're kind of running out of time, and I really quick, I want us to, um, our club has decided to enter the online chapter portfolio contest, which is you're using a, a imaginary $100,000, you invest it for a year, and you get to chip, um, select four to seven stock choices. So I guess we, we could fill this out now, or we just could just, have a discussion online. Um, several of us have met. I, I sent a message out to the whole club of people who wanted to participate. Um, so far, it was Anitra, myself, uh, Isla, who I met know. regularly. Yeah, met regularly. Ready was also present once. Hanny was present once. Um, I think Piero, were you present once? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we've decided that the people who attended all the meetings will uh, be eligible for presenting this uh, as a stock study. Uh, but uh, let's see, 
we're going to enter this as a, a, a club. And just to let you know, the stocks that we selected are V, which is kind of like a, um, is it like a Salesforce for small business? Can somebody clarify that for me? I'm not sure. Um, Micron, which Hanny selected. Uh, Eli Lilly, which is, I think, the diet, doing the diet drugs right now. NVIDIA. Uh, Amphistar. Nice. And Coparts or Gentex for number seven. So we can put this up for. Uh, discussion online we do it does have to be submitted by the 31st i'd like to have it finalized up by the 30th i i'll send this uh we did do ssgs on all of these except for micron it does micron is a little messy i don't know if you want to speak to that hanny this was hanny selection so um i don't know do you have any insight, Hanny, on the Micron? It doesn't look good on the SSG, but it's a the the time frame is 12 months. So the, whoever the enter, enters this contest has the highest um, return at the end of 12 months, or, or it's like 11 months wins. And I think we get a certain uh, a dollar amount. So I'm hoping if we win, then we can contribute it to our club dues so we won't have to pay dues next year if we win so, and you said lily you said lily v uh micron the video co-part i'm missing two i know i have it somewhere okay amphistar, amphistar, amphistar yeah. nice and, and, and co-part or gentex so uh, yeah if everybody wants to weigh in on that Oh, nice. We did decide on nice. Okay, I wasn't sure because nice. Well, we no, we we don't necessarily have to do nice, but okay. I mean now the price is down, so it might be a good opportunity to. That's true, and Vivi, uh, but is is nice affected by the war? I don't remember. The, but uh, Viva is a cloud, a leading supplier of cloud-based software solutions for life sciences industry. The company uh, addresses operating and regulatory requirements for customers ranging from small emerging biotechnology companies to departments of global pharmaceutical manufacturers. The company leverages its domain expertise to improve the efficiency and compliance of the underserved life sciences industry, displacing large, highly customized data enterprise resource planning that systems that uh, have linked flexibility. Does that give you what you were looking for? Yeah. Okay. And then I, I noted that it's a considered a, a white morning star morning star wide moat stock. So okay. um, I don't know if anybody attended the online chapter annual meeting, but um, Craig Bremer gave a, a, a presentation and he talked a lot about this um the morning star wide moat focus stocks i think they these stocks have outperformed the s p and oh and schwab's on here so amazon oh, amazon yeah we have yeah stocks on here that we hold so just wanted to bring up the wide moat focus for morning star um so yeah, so we'll be sending, I'll, I'll send that out tonight so everybody can review. If anybody has any concerns or is not in agreement, um, let me know. Otherwise we'll be submitting that uh, by the 30th. Okay. Is yeah, the, the 30th is a Friday. I'd say definitely by, it doesn't matter if it's um, uh, before is business hours or anything, because the 31st is a Saturday. I know. Let's just submit yeah. it by thir the thirtieth. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Is there anything? Let's see. What else? I know we, we're running out of time. Um, Jay, can you talk about the dues? Is everybody up to date on their dues? Jay, are you there? Yeah, I am here. I think so. Everybody paid. Okay. 
I think if this is the old. What's old? Use. Okay, take this. that off. Everybody's yeah. up to date. Uh huh. Uh. Wait. Oh, uh, let me think. Did we? Did you guys? Oh, Piero. Did Piero yeah. pay? Did Piero pay? Pay somebody? Pay either Haney or? Yeah, uh, I. I think what happened was that Haney paid, and I oh, have to okay, you pay Haney. Him. Yeah, Got I it. have to get back okay. to him. Yeah. Okay. Well, the full amount that you asked Jay for, I thought it was the, for the three of us. Yeah. So then, did Henny paid as well? Henny paid. Henny uh, PayPal to me. Right. So no, but I'm saying, but you sent me the number for all three of us, so I PayPal that number. So did yes, we... yes, yes. Okay, got it. Okay, sorry, it has been a while. Okay. No. Okay. No, my question is, did we just double pay though? Like, did Henny overpay? No, I can't. I don't know. I don't think overpay. Okay. Oh, I see what you're, okay. I have to verify. It has been a while. I don't think it's overpay. Did Actually, you, I can't. Mina, did you, did you pay for me? I, I know Jay sent me a number because typically we did that in the past because of the PayPal cost to the Canadians. So just, there's like a one fee. So I just sent, um, I, in the past and I've done that, I've like sent a lump sum to Jay for all oh, of us. Because, yeah, uh, so I, I, sent, you didn't I, double. I sent the full amount to Jay. Okay, yeah, so Mina, made... you paid yours. Um, uh, you paid just your yourself. Mm -hmm. You did not you... pay others. Okay, because I think yeah, I'll, I'll can check because I I I have an email from you, but yeah, maybe yeah. you change. Well, I that. think for Henny, maybe have a paid the Pierros. Then yeah. you gave me to pay too. So yeah, I give you Mina as just yourself. Okay, I'll I yeah, I have emails. Okay, let me just make sure. But yeah. Okay. Yes. I think Jay is is trying to scam us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I end up always paid a little bit more because we left and, and John and I pay the his basically. I, yeah, okay. I think Jay is trying to scam us. Okay. Okay, and I just to investigate that. Well, you're to our, uh, definitely for education next month. Well, for education topic and then. Does anybody else want to join Hanny and Mel for the stock study? Uh, Joanne, I'm not going to be here next month. Uh, okay. I'm going to be out of the country. Okay, I'm switching you then with Piero. So you'll be doing it in October. Uh, well, put me down maybe December. Uh, I'm going to take a full month. So I'm going to be mid, mid, uh, from mid September to mid October. Yeah. Okay. Where are you going? Yeah. I'm going to Turkey and Poland. Oh, nice. I'd like to know how that goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Poland is, they're both really nice places, apparently. Uh, Poland's pretty, it seems pretty cheap. Uh, accommodations are really cheap and food seems to be cheap. Um, uh, Turkey, we're spending uh, two and a half weeks there, Poland a week, and then uh, Ireland for a week. So nice. uh, that's the plan. Ireland seems to be a little bit more spendy. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry to interrupt, but who want, does anybody else want to um, join Hanny and Mel for the stock study for next month? Let's see. I don't, well, you haven't done a stock study. Who hasn't done that stock? last year? <laughs> Well, it's this is 2024. Uh, well, uh, October doesn't. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe November. Uh, okay, we don't have one for We're, November. Um, but anyway, I can join them, should, but I don't know how good okay. I would be. Wait, Anitra, what did you say? You want to do? An, I can join them, but I don't know how if I'll be. Oh, you're great, Anitra. Yeah, I'm going to join. Something. I'm going to join too. I'll be um, helping Mel out. Um, Anitra, yeah, if, you're not, if you're not, if you're not, if you, mm -hmm. if you're not very good, we'll just kick you out. Don't worry. <laughs> Anitra is really good about it's attending. Okay. So. <laughs> that okay. I am. That I am. Okay, so it'll be so. Hanny, what are? Let's quick get some times here. Are you are you available on Monday evenings? Uh, yeah, I think so. Evening, okay, so, your time or like what? E Whatever time, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
In in general, yes, Monday evenings are fine. There's it's like eight o'clock. Uh, eight Let's o'clock find... is fine. How okay, about the Mel... Oh, sorry. I want to find out when Mel's. Uh... Yeah. Uh, Mel, what time zone are you in? I'm in Eastern time zone. Okay, so you're so it's eight o'clock Monday. Okay, for stock study. Uh, yes, and this would be um. In the next like couple the weeks. Ninth, uh, let me just ch quickly check my um, schedule here. Um, this is a I couldn't do it next week. But uh, you know the ninth or the sixteenth or the thirtieth. Uh, well, we meet on the sixteenth, so we would plan on having uh, meetings on the twenty-sixth, the second, and the ninth. Okay, Sunday evening. No, Monday. Oh, he's asking if we could do it Sunday. Oh, well, no, Sunday. I don't know. Well, let me no. Okay, the the Mondays. Okay, on September, Mond. Uh, the second is Labor Day. Mm 